Good evening and welcome to the BBC News at 6. Billions of pounds a year could be saved by hospitals in England if efficiencies are made in staff management, surgical procedures and operating costs. An independent review by the Labour peer, Lord Carter, examined how five billion could be saved annually in the NHS by 2020. Lord Carter's study also found that nearly one in ten beds is taken by medically fit patients, so-called bed blocking, and he says it's costing the NHS close to a billion pounds every year. Our health editor, Hugh Pym, has more. He's got experience in business and health, and Lord Carter is the man chosen by the government to look at how hospitals might use their money more efficiently at a time of intense pressure on NHS finances in England. Do I think we can improve how we use the resources with the use of technology and with the things we understand? And I think we can do it, of course. We know how to do it. It's not as if this is an NHS problem. This is how individual hospitals, who aren't as good as the best, can get to that level. At the Guy's and St Thomas Trust in London, doctors and other staff are shown the cost of each item as they take supplies, encouraging them to draw only the minimum required. This hospital trust, which covers two major sites, spends £40 million a year on clinical supplies. As a result of this new stock control system, it's managed to save £4 million. Lord Carter's report suggests this sort of system could be used much more widely across the NHS. The report looks at a range of other areas where savings could be made. It says better procurement could save hospitals £700 million a year, Heating and lighting bills could be cut by 125 million through energy saving. It looks at variations in care, with prices paid for new hip joints ranging from 788 to 1600 pounds. It says delays discharging medically fit patients cost the NHS 900 million a year, what some call bed blocking. The report says this sort of initiative should be adopted more widely, in effect a halfway house at a Birmingham hospital for older patients who are fit to return home, but waiting for care plans to be put in place. When they move in here, beds elsewhere in the hospital are freed up for other patients. But getting them home from here isn't always straightforward. It can be extremely challenging to discharge people from hospital. We're seeing a real effect of the cuts in social care having a direct impact on the back door of the hospital and it's not the fault of our social workers. They are doing the best that they can do but with a limited resource. The report's findings have been broadly welcomed but some are pointing out it only provides part of the solution to the longer term challenges facing the NHS. This report is about doing the same thing more efficiently. What increasingly we need to do is just to fundamentally change the way we deliver care. More care at home, more self-supported care for people with long-term conditions and better outcomes for people by preventing them getting sick in the first place. In Scotland and Wales, social care funding has not been cut to the same extent. But for the NHS, the debate about saving money on the front line in hospitals is the same across the UK. And certainly, Hugh, these £5 billion pounds worth of savings may not be easy to find, certainly when it comes to bed blocking. And then there's the £22 billion pounds worth of savings that the government's aiming for overall by 2020. Well, yes, Fiona. I mean, Lord Carter's report has been broadly welcomed as a detailed piece of work on how you might get to £5 billion. Jeremy Hunt, the Health Secretary, has said it's groundbreaking. It'll let hospitals focus on patient care and cutting bureaucracy. But yes, where do you get the rest of the £22 billion from? We haven't had any detailed plans yet. There's been vague talk about keeping people out of hospital, looking after the, them better in the community, but no real firm plans there. And Labour have highlighted Lord Carter's point about delayed transfers of care, this 900 million because patients are stuck in hospitals. They're saying that's the real challenge, the immediate challenge, what they call the crisis of care under this government. Thank you. Thank you. The